G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me. So how has this constant rain and in some cases minor flooding affected our food garden? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain exactly that. How has the raised bed garden stood up? Have we lost any fruit trees? Let's get into it. Well, it's been raining so much that even the hogs have had enough of the veggie patch and are leaving, as you can see. I thought they loved mud and rain and wet stuff. But over the past several months, and to be truthful, the last 12 months, we've had so much rain that the earth just cannot take it anymore. So even any follow-up rain, which we are getting, makes the situation even worse. Besides the house, where you're standing now, and the front yard, this side of our property is the highest ground. So it made sense to me to site the fruit trees, or the main ones, in this area. Meaning that if there was a lot of rain, this would drain out faster and wouldn't hold as much water. So the tree roots wouldn't be sitting in boggy wet ground. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'd know that our property is sitting on clay soil. So to combat that clay, in most places, except for maybe the citrus trees, because they don't mind a bit of clay, I have built the soil up slightly so that the tree roots are elevated a little bit above that clay. The other thing I did for drainage in the early days was dig several trenches running lengthways down the hill, through the orchard, all the way down to what is now a dam that we've got at the back of our property. And this has formed a man-made kind of re-entrant that the water channels into. The trenches I backfilled with gravel and I put ag pipe in there. And that also has helped with the drainage. Thankfully, most of our fruit trees have survived, but there has been a few that haven't. Sadly, one of them is this one here, even on the highest ground, and it's a Panama berry, one of our favorite fruit trees. But now it's the very bare berry tree. The thing is, no matter what you do, some fruit trees are just way too susceptible to boggy ground. This is one of them, and avocados is another. Over the other side of our property, you can see this large African horned cucumber it's starting to die back now, probably a lot to do with all this rain, but it's also getting too cold for it. It climbed over that apple tree and also over an avocado. Yep, the cucumber, well, it grew and it produced, but sadly, the avocado, well, after about a month of that rain, I noticed it's starting to die off and it hasn't recovered since. And now that winter's set in, it's just kept the soil moist. Originally, I mounded this up at least a metre off the ground. And for some time, it grew really well and produced avocados. But again, it's come to grief and it's a bit sad, but I'll show you something that will cheer you up because it's cheered me up. This is just an absolute quagmire. No way could I get my mower in here. But have a look in the high ground. See something? Look at these young avocado trees. Full leaves, look healthy and green, and they've even got fruit on them. We've been eating, well, I think that one produced around nine avocados. It's only been in the ground a year and a half. Plenty of room for the taproot to grow down and not sit in the clay soil. There are a few weeds, as you can see, and I'm not bothering to knock them down. All these weeds and grasses are helping to keep that pile from slipping and falling down. In about five to 10 days, this fella's gonna be right and it'll be smashed avo on toast. Down the back of the veggie garden, it always gets wetter. The problem is these dwarf banana trees here have been sitting in water now for several months. We're losing trees like this one here they are simply dying and falling over. The worry is if this keeps up for another month or two, I'll end up losing a lot of them. A little bit of wetness is good for banana trees, but too much, even for a tropical plant like that, 
is too much. Having said that, we do typically have dry winters. So my fingers are crossed that we will have a dryish winter and it will dry up a lot of this land down the back here and it'll dry up in time for the banana trees to recover and all will be sweet bananas. Now, let's have a look and see, on the other hand, how the raised beds have gone in the vegetable garden. The first thing I noticed with this constant pouring rain was the sinkage in some of the raised garden beds, especially the ones that are fairly new, that I've put a lot of organic matter in the base. Yes, it's normal for raised beds to fall, but the speed that these have collapsed are the fastest I've ever seen. It seems that that extra rain has just weighed it down and kept on pushing and almost forcing those beds down and compacting everything underneath them. So the shrinkage was prominent and no one likes shrinkage, especially on your superannuation. But you can see the soil. There's a bit of a critter there. The soil is lovely, beautiful, and it's not cluggy. It'll hold together and then just slowly crumble apart. Perfect, great for growing. And you can see the artichokes in the other two beds, even though the beds have sunk in those beds as well, those artichokes are growing amazingly. And I reckon I'm gonna get a good winter's crop out of them. All I'm going to do with these beds and any others, like I have done with this one here, is just top them up with a bit of extra soil, maybe a bit of compost, organic matter, and just build those beds up to the top, like I always do, and then replant in for these winter crops. So apart from my shrinkage problem, which isn't that much of a problem, I promise you, there has been another one that's a bit of an issue and that is in these two beds here and a few others scattered around. The extra rain has caused a lot of fungal issues. The tomatoes in this bed aren't doing too well at all. The leaves are falling off, they're spotted, not all of them, a couple are doing okay, but the majority of them are suffering because of this extra moisture. And even some of the crops that handle moisture well, like this bed of cabbage seedlings, several of them have died back and toppled over due to stem rot and diseases like dampening off. I've brought you in a bit closer. There's a couple that you can see are doing okay, but these gaps here are where they've fallen over and died. Look at this one here. It's not going to recover. Well, it's dead. The soil underneath is fine. It's just that it's getting too damp around the stems and maybe it was the mulch. You know how I love mulch, 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 mulch. Well, I'm starting to think there are, or there might be one occasion where mulching might not be appropriate and it could be when it's like this, constant raining. I'm having the same problem here with these iceberg lettuce. Some of them are going okay, several of them have perished. And I think it is because it's just too wet for too long around the stems of the plant. So I either need to do this and open it up around those plants to give them a bit of fresh air, or I go more radical like I've done here and use no mulch at all. You're gonna get the weeds and they're already starting to come through, but it might give these young seedlings more of a chance. What you can do, of course, to help against like fungus, not that it's a problem with these eggplant, but it can be, is use a fungicide like eco fungicide or a copper spray. I have been doing that in the garden in between showers. But apart from that, which I haven't used much of, I have been keeping the fertilizer up, like this Activate Mate from the plant doctor, links below. I've been using that because this rain just keeps washing nutrients away and through. I think if I was to name one big success out of all this rain, and that has been the drainage in these raised garden beds. 
if our veggies were all in the ground here, they'd be all buggered by now. We wouldn't be able to grow a single thing in this horrible slosh. But because they're all raised up, the drainage has been perfect. And I don't know why these hogs are running away. I think that, well, they've been a bit pig-headed because I think that was a good spot for them in the veggie patch. Wherever they're going, I don't think it's gonna get any better. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a good drainage thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Share the video around because that helps my channel out heaps. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Let's hope it doesn't rain anymore. Please.